let's begin with one of the most popular topics which is every examiner's favorite that is cube roots of unity unity you know is one that is the purely real complex number 1 plus 0 iota so obviously in here i'm interested in computing the cube roots of 1 plus 0 iota just a while ago we had talked about fourth roots of unity which were equivalent to the roots of the equation z to the power 4 equals 1 in here also if i want to find those complex numbers which are cube roots of unity it is equivalent to finding those complex numbers which satisfy z cube equals 1 or roots of z cube equals 1 so my approach is going to be exactly the same i am going to write 1 that is 1 plus 0 iota as cos 0 plus iota sin 0 I am interested in cube roots of unity, so this raised to the power one by three is what I am interested in. Now this expression completely resembles what? It resembles cos theta plus iota sine theta raised to the power p by q. Okay. Alternatively, I can write this as e to the power iota zero to the power one by three, which resembles e to the power iota theta. Raised to the power p by q. In here, theta I am treating to be zero, p to be one, and q to be three. I know that e to the power iota theta to the power p by q has q distinct answers given by e to the power iota into two k pi plus p theta by q, where k is allowed to take value zero, one to three up till q minus one. Okay, so e to the power iota zero raised to the power one by three. will have three distinct answers corresponding to k varying from 0 to q minus 1 q is 3 so k will take up values 0 1 and 2 and what will these answers look like e to the power iota into 2k pi plus p theta p is 1 theta is 0 so p theta will be 0 and q is 3 okay so when you simplify this this comes out to be e to the power iota into 2k pi by 3 and my left hand side is nothing but cube root of unity so when i plug in each of these values of k in here what i'm going to get is three distinct answers representing the three distinct cube roots of unity what are those explicit answers coming out to be let's check it out when in here i plug in k equals 0 i get e to the power iota 0 let's call it z1 when you expand this this is written as cos 0 plus iota sin 0 which is nothing but 1 okay so my z1 is 1 next when you plug in k equals 1 what you end up getting is e to the power iota into 2 pi by 3 yes let's call this z2 and when you expand this using the euler form this comes out to be cos 2 pi by 3 plus iota sin 2 pi by 3 2 pi by 3 is what i can write this as pi minus pi by 3 cos of pi minus pi by 3 is same as minus cos pi by 3 which is minus 1 by 2 and sin of pi minus pi by 3 is sin pi by 3 which is sin 60 that is root 3 by 2 so this is coming out to be minus 1 by 2 plus iota times root 3 by 2 that means minus 1 plus root 3 iota whole by 2 okay what is this this is z2 cool lastly when you plug in k equal to 2 what you get is e to the power iota into 2 into 2 pi that is 4 pi by 3 let's call it z3 okay when you expand this using the euler form it comes out to be cos 4 pi by 3 plus iota sin 4 pi by 3 4 pi by 3 is nothing but pi plus pi by 3 and cos of pi plus pi by 3 is minus cos pi by 3 which is minus 1 by 2 and sin of pi plus pi by 3 comes out to be minus sin pi by 3 which is minus root 3 by 
That means this will boil down to minus 1 by 2 plus iota times minus root 3 by 2 or in a neater fashion this will be given by minus 1 minus root 3 iota by 2. This is my z3. Okay, so the three cube roots of unity are coming out to be z1, z2 and z3 wherein this is my z1, this is my z2 and this is my z3. Okay, now I want you to analyze their behavior. See, if z1, z2 and z3 are your cube roots of unity, you can clearly see that two are complex numbers and this is a real number. So when you have cube roots of unity, one is real and other two are complex. This is how using the de Moivre's theorem, you can compute the cube roots of unity. Also, I have an alternate approach to compute the cube roots of unity, which is using your concept of quadratic equations. So let's check that out. I want to compute the cube roots of unity, which is equivalent of saying that I want to find the roots of the equation z cube equals 1 or z cube minus 1 equals 0. Yes, so if I use the formula for a cube minus b cube, this comes out to be a minus b into a square plus a b plus b square equals 0. Okay. When product of two things is zero, this obviously implies in the next step that either the first quantity is zero or the second quantity is zero. Now, equating the first quantity with zero will give you z equals one. And when you equate the other quantity with zero, what you are getting is a quadratic equation in z. In order to find its two roots, I will obviously use my quadratic formula. So z will come out to be minus one plus minus root over one minus four upon two minus b plus minus root over b square minus 4ac upon 2a. Nothing new. So this gives you minus 1 plus minus root over minus 3 upon 2. But at this stage, we are not scared of looking at a negative number inside the square root because we know how to tackle it. I'm going to write this as root 3 into root over minus 1, but root over minus 1 I know is iota. So you are getting two roots from here minus 1 plus root 3 iota by 2 and minus 1 minus root 3 iota by 2. All in all, you are getting three complex numbers, three values of z, which satisfies z cube equals 1 or which are roots of the equation z cube minus 1 equals 0. And you can clearly see they are the exact same values, z1, z2 and z3. Okay, so you can either use the de Moivre's theorem or this quadratic equation approach to come up with the cube roots of unity. Got it? See guys, what makes this topic so important is its properties actually, because they are extensively used in questions. But before I expose to you the properties of cube roots of unity, let's indulge into a very small yet very insightful discussion. We've just computed how the cube roots of unity look like in the Cartesian form. I have z1, z2 and z3. Let's now write this in the polar form. So this will be given by cos 0 plus iota sine 0. This will be given by cos 2 pi by 3 plus iota sine 2 pi by 3. And this will be given by cos 4 pi by 3 plus iota sine 4 pi by 3. Okay, next let's write them in the Euler form. So z1 will be e to the power iota 0, z2 will be e to the power iota into 2 pi by 3 and this will be e to the power iota into 4 pi by 3. In here you have the Cartesian look, the polar look and the Euler look of the cube roots of unity with you you should be aware of each of these representations. Now, please observe that z2 is minus 1 plus iota root 3 by 2 and z3 is minus 1 minus iota root 3 by 2. It's like in, I, in z2, if I just replace iota with minus iota, I will get z3. So from here, I can certainly say z3 is nothing but z2 conjugate. Yes, also, 
Z to Z three, they are unimodular complex numbers. Do you agree that modulus is one? And what have we learned in the concept of complex numbers? We know Z Z bar is mod Z square. So I can say Z is mod Z square by Z bar, or one by Z is Z bar by mod Z square. Obviously, all this holds when Z is a non-zero complex number. Now, if Z is a unimodular complex number, mod Z is one, and hence mod Z square is one. And what do you end up getting is that the conjugate of Z is same as reciprocal of Z. So if I'm saying Z three is Z two bar, and Z two Z three I know are unimodular complex numbers. This is same as one by Z two. Z two is unimodular, so Z two bar is same as one by Z two. Also. If you look at their Euler representations, you will realize that when I square Z two, what I get is Z three. Do you agree? E to the power iota times two pi by three. When you square, you end up getting e to the power iota times four pi by three. That means you are getting Z three is also Z two square. So many relationships exist between Z two and Z three, isn't it? Now, for convenience, the notation to Z two is assigned to be omega, and hence Z three turns out to be either you can say omega square, which is same as omega bar, which is same as one by omega. Agreed. So, at this point of time, please note. That the cube roots of unity are given by one omega omega square, where omega square is same as omega bar or reciprocal of omega. All right, each of these complex numbers are non-zero, and when I say one omega and omega square represent cube roots of unity, that means when you compute one raised to the power one by three, you get these three as its answers. Also, this is equivalent to saying that one omega omega square are actually roots of the equation z cube equals one. That means each of these three complex numbers satisfy this equation. Or I can say one cube gives you one, omega cube gives you one, and omega square cube that is nothing but omega to the power six also gives you one. All right, understood. So we've kind of done a post mortem of the cube roots of unity, and now we are completely ready to understand its properties. So let's start. The very first property says that sum of all the cube roots of unity is zero. Let's quickly justify. It's very simple. When you add the cube roots of unity, you get one plus omega plus omega squared. You have to prove it's equal to zero. So let me plug in the explicit values of these roots. I'll keep one as it is. Omega is minus one by two plus iota root three by two, and omega square is minus one by two minus iota root three by two. You can see these two terms cancelled out. You are left with one minus one, which is zero. Hence proved. Sum of cube roots of unity is zero. In short, one plus omega plus omega square is always equal to zero. Moving on to the next property, which talks about product of cube roots of unity, it is claiming that it is equal to one. So now let's quickly multiply the cube roots of unity. I get one into omega into omega squared, which simply gives me omega cube, and I know that each of these three values are roots of the equation z cube equals one. So each of these three values satisfy this equation. Hence, omega also satisfies this equation. So, in place of z, when I plug in omega, this equation gets satisfied, and I get omega cube equals one. Hence, proved product of cube roots of unity is one. From here, I can deduce certain things. If omega cube is one, in the next step, I can write omega cube as omega into omega square. So, from here, I can say omega is one by omega square, or omega square is one by omega. Just keep these things in mind because they may be applied in the questions. Okay. Also, one very little, tiny, tiny property which uh, some of you all might have already observed is that when you write one omega omega square in this fashion, keeping one as the first term, 
omega as the second term and omega square as the third term, then this finite sequence actually is a GP. Do you agree? When you perform T2 upon T1, you get omega. When you perform T3 upon T2, you also get omega. So one omega, omega square in this order form a GP with first term 1 and common ratio omega. Okay.